Hello everybody. My name is Saurabh Chatterjee from Sia Photography and today I'm going to tell you how to take great pictures of the Milky Way. So let's get started. So let's talk about the camera first. Well, camera is something very important. So we say the gear does not matter, but well, in case of the Milky Way, the gear really makes a lot of difference. You need to have good gear. You can definitely shoot with an entry level camera, but the results will be very, very different compared to if you use a top of the end camera. Because here we are pushing the limits of the camera, so you have to have something really good. What kind of camera would, would I suggest? Yeah, what you can afford. So the best camera is what you have with you. What lens will be used for the Milky Way? So you can start with the kit lens. So, but if you have a wide angle lens, that will be really, really good. So uh, an 18 millimeter will be good enough. But if you have something like a 10 to 20 for a crop sensor or a 15 to 30 for a full frame sensor, that will be really good because the more the wider you shoot the better so you'll be able to capture the wider milky way with a lot of the landscape so whenever we are shooting the milky way it's not just the stars that we are looking for we are looking for an amazing foreground so that is what makes the milky way picture looks very interesting if you have a fast lens like a 2.8 lens nothing like it so the 1855 lens will have an aperture maximum uh, aperture of uh, 3.5 which is good but if you have something like 2.8 that will be really good that will make a lot of difference to your picture because you will be able to get the same amount of light at a much lesser ISO so tripod is the landscape photographer's best friend so you definitely need a very sturdy tripod okay and especially if you are shooting the Milky Way in India there are a lot of places where it can be very windy and the weather might be very adverse and definitely you are putting your expensive gear on top of that so you have to really be sure about the tripod okay. what other equipments do you require you definitely need an intervalometer what's an intervalometer so it's an instrument which can help you take pictures at different intervals a specified number of shots for a specified interval and of course you need uh, fully charged batteries if you have a battery pack it's good but otherwise just a battery should be good enough so the biggest problem in the Milky, shooting the Milky Way is how to focus. So this is how I focus on the stars. So you can see on my viewfinder I can see a small star and uh, I'm not sure if it's in focus or not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press the zoom in button and move to the star and uh, yeah, I'll zoom into the maximum so that it's easier for me to see. And now move the focusing ring and find the right place. So you see as I'm moving around, you see the size is getting larger and smaller. So I'll find the place where I get the perfect focus and just leave it like that. Okay, so you see now this is in perfect focus. This is what I do to help to help the camera focus at the perfect place. So now I'm not going to touch it and I'll get good pictures every time. If you have something in the foreground close, then there are chances that the, you will lose the depth so you will not get the details of that thing in the foreground so what are we going to do we are going to take another shot for the foreground so that will give you a great picture let us talk about the settings that we are going to use to shoot the milky way first thing is the aperture so your aperture has to be as wide as possible so if you have a 2.8 lens you are going to use a 2.8 or if you have a 3.5 that's what you have to use regarding the iso the iso might vary from 4000 or 3200 depending on uh, the situations regarding the shutter speed you have to divide 500 by your focal length so for example if your focal length is 20 millimeters 500 by 20 is 25 so 25 will be your shutter speed so i go to this app called the dark side finder.com and here if you go to the map menu you have a light pollution map you click on the light pollution map and you can see the map of the world it basically uses a google map plugin and here if i search for a place like lay it will take me to that place and here you can see there are apart from the little bit around the city pretty much everywhere you can go and shoot the milky way see there's everything now if i talk about the city where i stay in i stay in uh, currently i'm in hyderabad so here you can see there are hardly any place where i can go around and take pictures so everything is quite bright so there is uh, no way i can shoot the milky way so i have to go a little away from the city and then also i'll not get a very clear view now this can happen when you are in a place which is light polluted 
you see because of the light which is again very far away this must be around 40 to 50 kilometers away but still you can see how the milky way is getting so faint i'm not able to see it clearly the moon is another thing which you have to avoid so whenever you are planning your trips so here you can see uh, as the moon comes out how the milky way is getting fainter now how do you find out the position of the moon there is a website called the timeanddate.com so when you go to the timeanddate.com slash moon you will be able to see the the moon phases the time the moon rises and the time the moon sets so basically you have to start shooting when the moon is not there so either the moon has uh, you have to start when the moon is set or before the moon is about to rise so i generally plan my trips based on the moon position because i want to avoid the moon and the best time is the plus minus three or four days from the new moon so the milky way arch so this is uh, visible in the northern part of india you will be able to see this during april may june and july so uh, you'll be able to see the whole arch and this is amazing to shoot no matter how wide your lens is it is not possible to capture in one picture so you have to take several shots and stitch them into one picture like you see here in this picture this is a stitch of about eight shots so using a tamron 15 30 2.8 lens so as i told you the foreground is something very very important so in these pictures you will see it's a foreground that is making the picture look more interesting okay so you have to really uh, go out and find the best foreground for your pictures this is another stitch start, sort you can see so i have taken several shots this was shot with a uh, nikon 20 mm and i have stitched all those pictures six pictures into one and i've got it like this so the only difference between shooting the milky way and the start rail is uh, milky way you just take one shot and you are done the only thing is the milky way keeps on shifting so you have to have it at the right position okay and uh, for the start rails you have to wait for a long time so it will take probably an hour or two to to get a very good start rail because you have to take about at least 100 shot to get those really round circles and that is what makes a really good start rail picture now see this picture so this was again a uh, 110 shots and that's how i was able to get it so nicely so there's another shot of the star trails you can see so and uh, uh, fortunately i got a very good foreground as well so which is very very important now one thing about the star trail is you have to use an instrument called the intervalometer so i was mentioning about it before so you, you need something like 100 to 200 shots to to combine them together in uh, photoshop so uh, that instrument is something very very important for a star trail you have to have the north star or the pole star in between around which all the circle goes so you have to track the position of the north star because it's very important because all the stars go around the north star so how do you find out the north star so you see you will find the big dipper okay so in the northern part of the sky you'll be able to find the big dipper and when you draw a straight line from the big dipper you will be able to see the brightest star which is the north star so uh, the sailors used to use the north star to find their direction so some uh, tips so first thing is do a go in advance find the place do a recce and so that in the evening you don't have to struggle for the place the second thing is uh, so mind the other people so don't walk into each and every people's frame and don't switch on the light okay so one exercise i would like to give you is uh, maybe before you go you do a little bit of practice of uh, close your eyes and feel the camera see the settings if you are able to change and if you are able to do this you will be able to do things really very quickly and the other thing you don't have to switch on the light for changing the settings because uh, light is something which is very disturbing so if uh, you are switching on the light it is disturbing the other people's picture so you have to take care of this as well so the other thing is pushing yourself beyond the limits okay so a lot of times you have to shoot in when the temperature is really bad it is windy or the temperatures are very cold so you just have to push yourself beyond the limit sometimes you feel lazy you don't want to come out of your warm sleeping bag you have to you have to for the sake of a picture so what's stopping you from taking a great milky way picture go out and shoot 